Ah, uh, first crushes. We all remember them. And if you're a girl who grew up in the 90s, your first crush might have been one of the dream phone guys. Oh boy. I think Gary, he has kind of a nice smile. Yeah, I'd say Matt's probably a jock. This is Mike Gray, the unlikely inventor of the ultimate 90s tween dating game. We needed a game targeted towards nine-year-old girls. It was a bunch of guys that did it, but that's okay. I know who it is, but I'm not telling. Oh. I said, let's do something that's kind of like Clue. So it's deduction. We're going to call a bunch of boys because we heard some boy likes us. So it all started with the phone, right? Yes. We kind of laughed and we kind of called this the pink slipper. You know, in its day, it was an elegant and beautiful thing. I know where he hangs out. So how did they pick the boys of your teenage dreams? We went to a photo house. We didn't know like who these boys were or anything. We just picked ones that we liked. But that's not the only 90s girls game Mike made. He also made the super successful Mall Madness. But he's pretty real about his influence as a guy. Well, if I'm gonna make a game about shopping, what I know about shopping, you just go get what you need and get back to the car. Later, it was pointed out to me that that's kind of not the way ladies shop. So it was kind of, in a funny way, a guy's game, you know, but it was for girls. I say games are togetherness in a box. Play a game with people, you learn a lot about them. And it shouldn't be about winning and losing, it should be about being together. You're right. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Without Abraham Lincoln, and really his beard? Milton Bradley, the godfather of board games, would have never existed. Bold statement, I know, but let me explain. The game of life. The spinner, the cars, the choices. College or career, kids or no kids, lawyer or farmer. This family game night staple was once a pretty morbid game. Back in the 1800s, Milton Bradley was in the lithograph business. Following the Republican National Convention of 1860, Bradley printed thousands of images of Abraham Lincoln, who was clean shaven at the time. Shortly thereafter, Lincoln debuted his iconic beard, rendering all of Bradley's prints worthless. His lithograph business went belly up. So Bradley was forced to try something new. He came up with a board game, a seemingly dark and twisted board game appropriately named the Checkered Game of Life. The game functioned in a similar way to how it does now. There was a spinner, colored circles that moved around the board, and of course squares that could either make you or break you. The squares on the original game were overwhelmingly grim, boasting actions like disgrace, poverty, ruin, crime, prison, and, well, suicide. Regardless, the game flew off the shelves. Kids loved it, and Milton Bradley went on to own Family Game Night. Fast forward to about 100 years later. They revamped the game, trading Bradley's morbid squares for the more delightful ones like Payday or Graduation, which we have all come to know and love. And so there you have it, the story of the game called life. Thanks, Lincoln. In many parts of the world, Scrabble is viewed as a pastime, as a game where maybe old people play after retirement and all that. But Scrabble in Nigeria is actually very big. It is seen as a sport. There is an actual Nigerian Scrabble Federation under the Ministry of Sports. They have a lot of young people hoping to earn an actual living from playing Scrabble. My name is Welling Tinjigere, and I'm the World Scrabble Champion. I started playing Scrabble in 1996 when my immediate elder brother taught me the game. It wasn't until uh, six years after that I was playing uh, with some of my neighborhood friends and they were like, ah, you are quite good. Why not uh, play in tournaments? And I was like, wow, you mean they play this in tournaments? And <laughs> the rest is history as they say. Having an African win the World Scrabble Championship is bigger than I can actually comprehend. You needed to have been in the hall to see the jubilation of our other African brothers. It was something that everyone in Africa that plays Scrabble has actually looked forward to. 
Nigeria is a very, very diverse nation. We have well over 500 developed languages, but the major means of communication all over Nigeria is English. And since Scrabble is based upon the English vocabulary, it's going to be a way of helping each and everyone improve their command of the English language. So what do you think we should play from here? If I hadn't played Scrabble, I might have been involved in some other not so legitimate activities. And I think uh, playing Scrabble, it keeps you on the right track. Okay, go. We are not uh, blind to the fact that the level of unemployment in the country is very, very immense. So I came up with the Wellington Foundation for Scrabble and Mind Development in Africa. There's a lot of uh, similarities between how life actually goes and how Scrabble goes. You get to understand that it's not all the time that you get things your way. You really have to make the best out of the little that you are given. You know, each country is known for a particular sport. Brazil, for example, is known for football. We are hoping to make Scrabble a Nigerian sport. Whereby, if you mention Scrabble in any part of the world, Nigeria should come to mind. Settlers of Catan is one of the best-selling board games of all time. And nestled in the rolling hills of Rossdorf, Germany, on this picturesque street, past the buzzer in Building 43, and standing in the back of the garden, is Klaus Tuber, the man who made it all happen. Settlers of Catan is a board game for up to four players where you collect resources to build settlements and cities. They're worth points, first to ten wins. And it all started like this. In the 90s and 80s, uh, I led a dental laboratory. Developing games was a little bit a uh, refuge for me. His first game was called Barbarossa. When I made uh, Barbarossa, I was in my early 30s. I feel that this is a kind of thing I like very much, uh, developing games, and it could be in the future for me uh, a very, very good hobby. He designed a handful of other games and then made Catan. Klaus had become interested in Viking tales. Yes, uh, the story of the Vikings inspired me. I imagine how they reach Iceland. They need wood, they need houses and all the things. And so on this imagination, uh, I developed Catan. From design to market, it was a family affair. This is Benny Tuber. He lives in Germany and he is Klaus's youngest son. And this is Guido Tuber. <clears throat> And this is Guido Tuber. He lives in San Francisco. He is Klaus's eldest son. In my family, I am one of the game testers, along with my mom. Me too. We play tested the Settlers of Catan quite often. We would all get together at the dining room table and would test and has his games. Sometimes he put a Mickey Mouse comic next to my chair. So in case the game was boring, he knew that I would read it instead of playing the game. My dad took that and tweaked that worked on it. This was sort of an exciting moment for my dad. In the Tuber family, there's a bit of competition. My father would probably say I'm the best player. No. Sorry, dad. Benny is the best. Mm. There's a bit of a rivalry between my dad and my brother. <laughs> Catan was officially released in Germany in 1994, and it was an immediate success. We had an immediate success in Germany because we won a Game of the Year. Worldwide, to date, over 24 million copies have been sold. This game was born out of a story, but it also creates stories. The beauty of Catan is that in the end, you still have constructed something. So in a way, everybody wins. It uh, was my wish to have a very peaceful game with a lot of interaction, bringing people together. For me, Catan was a success. To all the Catan fans out there, here's some advice. 
Well, you always have to follow your strategy, but also you have to complain quite a bit. Even though you know you're winning, you still have to say you're not. I love building cities as early as possible in the game. Never build the longest road at the beginning. And there you have it.